Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is okay. Yes, sir. It is okay. Dr. Kavin, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? How are you doing? Balaji, good evening. <laughs> good to Balaji also, sir. With us. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Balaji, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Anivan, sir, also present. Anivan, yeah, sir. Uh, <laughs> our, our president elect has come. Very good. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, sir. Hello, Hello. We are now in the brilliant show, the paper presentation competition, episode 13, mm -hmm. presented by most popular online platform, Existential School. We all were sitting up in our own residence near 1.5 years for COVID-19 situation. Recently, the government has declared and opened the medical colleges and the school colleges as well. So we are in the we were in the losing situation, and our study was also hampered in those days. But in that losing moment, the one and only existent school has helped us providing all types of instruments and added new flavor to our studies and colored our skill prominently. So, for example, our uh, exit provides us exit dental school uh, membership program for all phases of uh, students to complete the full course of basic studies in online. Not only for this, uh, from the very beginning, note sharing, MCQ learning, uh, quiz session, slide providing, making video lecture, and many types of content, and the competition <clears throat> was made in the previous uh, days. So for all of this, uh, I will thank you to our special person who make our study more colorful is our Dr. Farhad Rishambhaya, the president of Exist Dental School, firstly. And uh, again, I will also give thanks to our respected teachers and mentors and uh, Exist Workshop event team members who always work for the benefit of our medical students. So I'm feeling very overwhelmed to be a part of Exist family, as well as today's moderator of this biggest, biggest competition that is happening for the first time in the Bangladesh uh, online platform. So, Assalamu Alaikum. I am Hussam Haru Aparna from Sapena Women's Dental College, session 2019 and 20. Let's present uh, our gorgeous teachers for today's session. Uh, that seems uh, more interesting are our uh, Dr. Onupam Podarsar, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Periodontology and Oral Pathology, Dhaka Dental College. Assalamu Alaikum. Alaikum <laughs> Salam. Now, uh, I will introduce our honorable teacher, Professor Mohammad Aksam Parvistar, uh, head dental engineer, Chotogram uh, Medical College, Dean, uh, Faculty of Dentistry, Chittagong Medical University. And our today's special final judges are Professor Dr. Shiva Manjanath Arjesar, Professor and Head, Department of Periodontology and Oral Pathology, Institute of uh, Dental Science and uh, Bareilly, India. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. And our last, uh, and our, uh, another gorgeous teacher, Dr. Robin B. Gudba, sir, uh, principal and dean dental faculty, Sri uh, Siddhar Dental College, Tungur, Bangalore, India. Assalamu alaikum. Our, uh, in this uh, today's session, our uh, another two uh, judges are also present here. Uh, they are Balaji Manhur, sir, and Onivar Chatterjee, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Sir, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Namaste, namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. namaste. I'm very honored to feel that our special teachers are sacrificing their personal schedule time to spend here. So thank you so much to attend and uh, make us more special. So let's see who are the today's competitors uh, of the station from Team Graph Group. Uh, our first competitors are uh, Sharmin uh, Akhtar Shornahapu from Chattogram International Dental College, session 2017 and 18. Uh, our second participant is uh, Shaila Isham Kutunahapu uh, from Sapporo Dental College, session 2017 and 18. And our third competitor is uh, uh, Kitsi Nair Vasuapu from Dhaka Dental College, session 2017 and 18. I will thank all of our participants and uh, Assalamu Alaikum. Uh, the name of our today's uh, session is uh, Non-Surgical Periodontal Procedure. Uh, so before going to the presentation portion, I will listen to the golden reaction uh, of our honorable teachers for today's session. Firstly, I will request uh, Hamdi to our foreigner teacher, 
Professor Dr. Shiva Manjunath RJ sir uh, in this purpose. Sir, assalamu alaikum. Sir, if you tell us uh, something about this program. Hello, Shiva Munjunath sir. Hello, Shiva Munjunath sir. Please tell something about today's program. Shiva Munjunath sir, please. Maybe any problem uh, of question uh, here. So I will move down to the next uh, our judges. Uh, Dr. Probin B. Kudva sir, uh, uh, please tell us something about this. Uh, well, um, it's, uh, you know, very nice to see the way the uh, Bangladesh dentistry fraternity is working on uh, programs, uh, right to increase the undergraduates and, uh, you know, bring forward the uh, basic uh, treatment modalities and uh, newer avenues in dentistry. And uh, I used to keep uh, seeing these, uh, the flyouts uh, when Anirban and Dr. Balaji were there. And uh, it was very nice, uh, uh, the initiative taken by all the seniors in the uh, Bangladeshi Periodontal Society as well as the Dentistry uh, Society out there to encourage such events and uh, uh, you know bring awareness among the students and the public at large. So I really congratulate the entire team and uh, uh, very thankful to all of you all to invite me and it's a pleasure always being here. And my special uh, mention to Dr. Anupam Poda who has been, I think, uh, very instrumental in getting all these programs uh, charted out together. So congrats to you and the entire team. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for uh, your golden words. So mm -hmm. I will move on to the next uh, judges, uh, Dr. Palaji Manhur, sir, uh, to say about this purpose. Uh, I'm, I'm not a judge here today. I am just a spectator. Only thing I want to wish all of you the best wishes. Uh, Dr. Anupam, thank you for having me once again. Thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, I will request Dr. Anirban Chatterjee, sir, to uh, tell us something about this. Uh, basically, thank you, Dr. Anupam. And I, this is dental. I have been associated with uh, Bangladesh uh, uh, Peronal Society and uh, for <coughs> eight years now. Uh, and uh, it has been a great uh, honor to be attached. I have been doing program with the Bangladesh uh, Peronal Society Access Center from, I think, from so many months together. It is a great initiative taken uh, related to Perio because uh, in Bangladesh, as you know, the Peronal Society has not taken up as it is in other subjects like ortho, conservative, oral surgery, prosto, and a part of like pedo. So it is, it will be the leaps and bounds. It is going ahead because of the great initiative by, and only one man who has taken it up on his own shoulder, Dr. Anupam Poddar. Without his uh, participation, without his action, it, I don't think this uh, would have uh, been possible. So it's really thankful uh, that uh, he's been doing uh, one man army uh, recruitment for the Bangladesh uh, period. Uh, that's that's the best of luck, best of wishes for everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, and uh, our uh, gorgeous teacher of today's session, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor uh, Atam Parvet, sir, to uh, say something about this. Thank you, Dr. Aparna. I appreciate Accidental School for arranging this program. Actually, <clears throat> school is arranging continued dental education, especially on periodontology. I appreciate it. And special thanks to Dr. Onupo for his initiatives. I would like to express my heartfelt thanks to our honorable judges, Dr. Pravin, Pravin Bikundo, Dr. Shiva Manjunath, Dr. Malaji Manjunath, and Dr. Onidban Chatterjee. Actually, periodontology is an important branch of industry, and periodontal diseases are very really common, and most of the people suffer from periodontal disease, and it has a remote effect and systemic effects too. This uh, periodontal disease is related with increased CD protein 
and this increased CDK protein is associated with myocardial infarction, stroke, atherosclerosis, chronic diseases. And ventricular disease is the most common cause of tooth loss. So, uh, knowledge in this subject is very important, and this type of program will encourage the students and doctors to learn, to learn more on this subject. So, objective of the program and objective of the, this exist central uh, school program is to encourage students and doctors to learn more and more on this subject. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your assent and important work. So I will go to the last, but not the least, our today's gorgeous teacher uh, and existing. Open up, open up, please. Open up, Shiva Mujuna, please. Shiva Mujuna, Shiva Mujuna, please. Shiva Mujuna, please. Shiva Mujuna, please. Yes, sir. Uh, so I, I will humbly request to Shiva Mandunath sir to say, uh, tell something about this, sir. Uh, thank you, Aparna. I'm uh, sorry for the inconvenience due to the uh, net issue, uh, but it's really wonderful to be part of this uh, organization and uh, mm -hmm. special thanks to Dr. Anupam Koda and uh, for giving this opportunity. And I was there a couple of days back in the same uh, and a forum, but it's really wonderful to interact with you guys. And it's nice that at this uh, juncture to encourage the uh, undergraduate students to do something good about, you know, perio subjects. And uh, as I got to know a few days back in Bangladesh, uh, the perio subject regarding perio subject, whatever the uh, actions have been taken by you, your teachers is really amazing. And I hope we see something great is going to happen in the coming days in the Imperial Society in Bangladesh. With that, best wishes to all of you and uh, looking forward to have a great session. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your uh, work. And uh, I, will, uh, I will like to uh, request our Dr. Onupam Podar, sir, our exit advisor, and uh, our most admirable teacher also. So I will request you to say something about this. Uh, thank you, uh, Aparna, uh, today's moderator. You, you are a student of Savannah Dental College and best 2019 and 2020. That, that, that means you are the you are a first year student. Uh, I am very happy to you in this platform uh, in first year. Uh, I hope you, you are doing best. I am um, very good afternoon, very good evening. All our today's presenters and our today's honorable judges and our uh, today's international advisors who advise us uh, every time in any uh, any time our session is uh, it is our 13th session today's topic is non-surgical periodontal procedure and group's name is graph the speaker uh, speaker are Sharmin Akhtar Shorna from Chittagong International Dental College, best 2017 and 2018, and Shaila Shar Islam Shuchana, Sapporo Dental College, best 2017 and 2018, and Kirti Nair Bhasu, is Dhaka Dental College, 2017 and 2018. Kirti Nair Bhasu is the uh, a man of uh, Malaysia. He is a Malaysian student, Indian born Malaysian. He is a third phase student uh, in our uh, in our in our college and uh, in our uh, in our department also. And our today's judges, both honourable judges, Professor Dr. Akram Parvez Choudhury, is the dean of Medical University Chittagong, Medical University Chittagong, and also the uh, unit head. Chittagong Medical College Dental Unit and our another judges, our foreign judges, we are very pleasure. We are, I am we are very pleasure to join with us, Professor Dr. Provin Bikudba, Principal and Dean, Dental Faculty, Sri Siddhartha Dental College, Tumkuru, Bangalore, India. And also, <coughs> Professor Dr. Shiva Mujuna, sir, Professor and he, Department of Periodontology and uh, Implantology Institute of Dental Science, Barely, India. Now, I, mean, I am also thanks our two international advisors, 
Professor Dr. Anibal Chatterjee, the Indian Society of Odontology, President elect. Uh, hopefully, the, he will be with us as President next October. And, and Professor Dr. Balaji Manohar is the principal and the head department of Pedontology and oral pathology, pedontology and oral implantology, Kalinga Institute of Mental Sciences, Bhubaneswar, India. I am very happy. The five international judges, five international advisors are with us, and I have some advice to our students. You, you are uh, very. Uh, <coughs> Uh, you, you are being very uh, much uh, interesting uh, this session. This, this is a very much interesting session because uh, the five judges are with you and no tension, no worry. Uh, it will be, they give a suggestion. Uh, finally, they will uh, have suggestion if you uh, feel any, uh, any mistake, they will give the proper way of the session. And, and uh, the judges are carry uh, 100 mark uh, for each uh, participant and also um, uh, for moderator 100 mark. And uh, the marks also come from the social media, uh, that means Facebook, uh, that is uh, love, care, and like sources, sources. And hopefully, this session will be getting greater one. And thank you, Aparna, and thank you. and. Thank you all uh, who are uh, uh, related to the Exit Gender School platform. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your special words. And uh, uh, I will uh, now, we are all about the meet portion of this uh, session. So I want to tell the rules before calling the presentation. Every participant has only 10 minutes to show their presentation. I will count the time after eight minutes I will knock the uh, knock the participants to finish the presentation within two minutes. And after that, the question answering session will be started. And uh, now I would request to our first participant, my uh, Sharmin Akta Shona Apu, to begin your pr presentation. So Apu. Thank you, moderator. Let me know if my screen is visible or not. Yes, it is visible. Okay. Okay, assalamu alaikum. I am, uh, my heartfelt gratitude and warm welcome to dear all participants, respected judges, Professor Dr. Muhammad Akram Parvisar, Professor Dr. Praveen B. Kudvasar, Professor Dr. Shiva Manjana sir, and Professor Dr. Anupam Kodda sir. I am Shaminatta Sharna from Chattogram International Dental College, session 2017 to 2018. Today, our topic is non-surgical periodontal procedure. And here are my contents, non-surgical modalities of periodontal therapy, scaling and its objectives, condition that can be reversed by scaling, detection skill, instruments of manual scaling, supragendival and subgendival scaling technique manual, Advantages and disadvantages, re-evaluation. Okay, non-surgical periodontal therapy is referred, uh, is also referred as phase one therapy uh, and in, or initial therapy. Um, now, what are the non-surgical modalities of periodontal therapy? They are back control, supragingival and subgingival scaling, root planning, the adjunctive use of chemical agent. Scaling. Scaling is the process by which biofilm and calculus are removed from both supragingival and subgingival tooth surfaces. No deliberate attempt is made to remove tooth substance along with the calculus. The no objective of scaling is to remove or eliminate of inflammation clinically and restore gingival health by completely removing elements that provoke gingival inflammation, such as biofilm, calculus, endotoxin, from the surface. 
Now you can see over here that uh, there's other conditions that can be reversed by scaling. First one in calculus in feet, second one in divides, and third one is dependent gingival sulcus or periodontal pocket. Now these are the instruments of manual scaling and figures uh, A, you can see this is curet. This is basically used for subgenerative scaling and figure B is sickle scaler. This is uh, used for supragenerative scaling and figure C D is, is uh, chronically file chisel and hole. This is used for subgenerative scaling. Okay. Uh, in the first figure, you can see the both ends of sickle scalar, and the remaining uh, second and third one, this is universal curate and this is basic curate, and both of them using subgenerative scaling. Okay, before going to the further, uh, I, will, I would like to show uh, a video regarding the uh, supergenerable scaling. Okay. You can see the dentist is cleaning the surface on the lingual side and now on the facial side. And this is of course away from the dentist. So this is how it is done. Okay. Yeah. Now detection is skill. This is uh, done by visual examination and tactile exploration. Uh, in case of visual examination, light deposits of uh, supergenerative calculus are often difficult to see when they are wet with saliva. So compression may be used to dry supragenital calculus until it is stocky, white, and readily visible. They are also may be directed into the pocket in a steady stream to detect the marginal geneva away from the tooth so that uh, the uh, subgenital deposit near the surface can be seen. Sorry. And in case of tech exploration, fine pointed scalar for detection of subgenital scaling. Okay. So how supergenerative scaling is done, you can see over there, this is the age of a uh, sickle scalar and uh, sickle scalar used with a pulling stroke to uh, clean the supergenerative calculus. Now subgenerative scaling technique, the clinician, the clinician must rely heavily on tactile sensitivity to detect calculus and irregularities in case of that. So figure in, you can see curate is inserted uh, with the face of the blade flush against the tooth. And in uh, figure B, you can see working angulation between 45 to 90 degree is established at the base of the pocket. And in case of figure C, uh, the lateral pressure is applied and the scaling stroke is activated at, uh, along the coronal direction. Now, what are the advantages and disadvantages of manual instruments as compared with mechanical instruments? Advantages are, as you all know that um, in this COVID time, it is better to use the hand scaler rather than mm -hmm. the ultrasonic scaler uh, as the virus remain in latent stress for about two to three months. Uh, it doesn't produce any errors all, more tactile sensation than the ultrasonic, more visibility. And disadvantages are less efficiency, need to sharpen, more chance for repetitive stress injuries. The results. Studies ranging from one month to two year in length demonstrated up to 80% reduction in bleeding on probing and mean probing depth uh, reduction of two to three millimeter. Other studies demonstrated that percentage of period on the pocket of four millimeter or deeper was reduced by more than 50% and many cases up to 80%. Okay, uh, this is very important to be noted that uh, after every phase, uh, we have a maintenance phase. So what should we do? We, sh uh, we should uh, re-evaluate the tissue response to the uh, non-surgical periodontal procedure 
after scaling telling an other phase of phase one procedure the periodontal tissue required approximately four weeks to heal and this time allows the connective tissue to heal and accurate drop depth can be measured as you can see in the first figure and the second figure, this is the uh, this is before scaling and this is three months of three weeks after scaling you can see the gingival condition is uh, is much better than the previous one and the teeth are looking more clean and tidy than the previous one isn't it nice okay these are my references Kind of clinical period of uh, don't already 13 edition and relevant figures are collected from Google's and last not but the least, I would like to thank uh, Agnes and Dr. Anupam Bodhisar for creating uh, such kind of opportunity for all of us to perform. And I'm super pleased uh, that uh, I, I could be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you, Apu. That was very well uh, presentation. So I will request uh, our second participant, uh, Shaila Islam Shutan Apu, to show your slides. Shaila Islam Shutan Apu, thank you. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, Apu. You are audible. Yes. Is my slide visible? Yes, visible. You can set up. Good evening, everyone. I am Shaila Islam Shutrana from Support Dental College, and I am currently uh, studying at fourth year. So, uh, Today, I'll be presenting non-surgical periodontal procedure. But uh, before I start, I'd like to thank um, uh, Accidental School for uh, providing us an amazing platform. And I'd like to also thank you for uh, to our honorable judges and uh, especially Dr. Anupam Poddar sir uh, for, uh, for giving us uh, their valuable time. And of course, I'll uh, also congratulate my co-participants and uh, uh, Miss uh, uh, Miss uh, Miss Aparna, uh, you're you're done. Uh, you're doing uh, very well tonight. So uh, let's to the point. And uh, now I'm uh, sharing my presentation. So, so non-surgical periodontal procedure. Today I'm gonna tell about uh, subgingival curettage and root planing. I'll briefly uh, explain, uh, explain uh, right, uh, introduction, definition, induction, indication, and uh, contraindication of curatage, procedure principle of root planing, objective of root planing, uh, instrument activation, scaling, and root planing procedure, and the conclusion. So what is actually non-surgical periodontal procedure? Uh, it is an integral, integral uh, uh, periodontal treatment, uh, which is defined as a uh, plug control, plug remove, and uh, root debris, uh, then, uh, then uh, supragingival and subgingival uh, uh, scaling, and the uses of the chemical agents. So this is includes with uh, scaling, curettage, and uh, root planing. So how can we define the curettage? The curettage can be defined uh, as uh, it is used in uh, periodontics to mean the scraping of gingival wall of a periodontal pocket to separate diseased soft tissue. And it is performed under local anesthesia and with sharp curettes aimed at inflamed pocket uh, wall reduction, elimination, epithelial root attachment, or new attachment. So, next uh, slide is uh, showing that a figure where A is indicate the gingival curettage and B is indicated the subgingival curettage. So here we can see the OCS crest of the alveolar bone, the lateral pocket of the tooth, and some kind of tissues with junctional epithelial attachment. So what is the gingival curettage? It is removal of the inflamed soft tissue lateral to the pocket bone. And the subgingival curettage is 
performed to the epithelial attachment, severing the connective tissue attachment down to the osseous crest. So next slide is showing that the indication of the curettage. We know it is, it is the basic periodontal therapy procedure where a curettage should always be preceded by the scaling and root planing. So it can be performed is a in moderate deep uh, infrabony pockets located in accessible where, uh, area where the surgery is deemed advisable. And it is also reduced the inflammation prior to pocket elimination or in a patient whom aggressive surgical technique are contraindicated, uh, which is uh, are contraindicated. And finally, it can be also recalled visit where the area of the recurrent inflammation is happened. And of course, pocket depth particularly where the pocket reduction surgery has been done before. So next slide is the contraindication of the curettage. These, in these some, uh, some cases like this, uh, presence of acute infections such as necrotic uh, ulcerative gingivitis and therapeutic tissue enlargement and uh, extension of the base of the pocket apical to the mucogingival junction and of course the medically compromised patient. In these cases, we do not uh, give the curettage procedure. In curious procedure, there uh, they, it can uh, can be accomplished by uh, in two ways, like a closed procedure and a, a open procedure. The closed procedure with a sharp curate, and the open procedure with a gingival incision followed by the tooth blend. Here, first we have to apply a local anesthesia, then uh, the selection of the uh, curate. It's really uh, important. Uh, because the cutting edge will be against the tissue. And it is done by the Gracie curates, which is the um, area specific curate and uh, the Columbia Universal curates. By uh, horizontal, horizontal stroking, the engaging of the inner lining of the pocket wall and the pocket wall supported by gentle finger pressure, uh, gentle finger pressure on the external surface. In the case of subgingival curettage, the tissue attached between the bottom of the pocket and alveolar crest are removed with a scooping motion of a curate to tooth surface. And finally, remove the debris by flushing out. And here also be applied a gentle finger pressure to adaption of the, for adaption of the tissue. Here in this process, sometimes suturing and period of the back should be indicated. So now the part of fruit planning. What is root planning? It is the process by which residual embedded calculus and portions of cementum are removed from the roots uh, to produce a smooth, hard, and clean surface. The main principle of this root planning is completely removal of disease cementum and some other elements like uh, biofilm, uh, calculus, and some endotoxins. So uh, by this, it, um, here gingival uh, uh, health will be restored. And of course, by this, the glassy smooth tooth surface is provided. So these, these can be helped to uh, recreate uh, the reattachment and or new attachment between the tooth surface and gingiva. So coming to the next slide, we uh, here uh, I'm discussing the objective of the root plan. By securing the biologically acceptable root surface, resolving inflammation, pocket depth, and facilitating oral hygiene, improving and maintaining the attachment level and preparing the tissue for surgical procedure. And these are the objectives. So before we start uh, the root planning procedure, we have to know about some instrument activation. So here is uh, some instruments like chisel, hose, sickle scalers, and files. And uh, of course, there is a adaption. So adaption must be a lower shank parallel to the long axis of the tooth. And blade, blade angulation must be established between 25 to 90 degree angle. And the stroke direction should be vertical and oblique. The stroke length should be extended from the base of the sulcus to the cement channel junction. And here are some strokes uh, for removing the cementum, approximately 20 strokes. And for aggressive root planning, there will be 10 to 20 or more strokes will be um, given. And here we can uh, hold the instrument by modified pen grasp or standard pen grasp or palm and thumb grasp. So here we can see a figure 
we uh, will showing a uh, subgenual scaling androgenic procedure. So here we can see the A uh, slide is uh, showing that the tumor is inserted to the face and the blade flush the, against to the tooth. And the working angulation should be 40, 45 to 90 degrees, which is established as a base of the pocket. And the lateral pressure should be applied and the scaling should be activated at the coronal direction. So if I sum up this entire concept, uh, uh, I can definitely uh, uh, tell this, the scaling and root planning is one of the most effective ways to treat uh, gum disease before it becomes severe. And of course, following proper instrument, uh, instrumentation technique and chair position helps to avoid to complete the procedure without any delay. So, oh, these, are references. so these are my references. Uh, which make me, I'm making this uh, presentation as good as possible. And thank you so much, everyone, for listening to me uh, so patiently uh, for so long. And that's from all, that's all from my side. Thank mm -hmm. you, everyone. Thank you, Apu, for uh, for that presentation. That was very appreciating, and uh, that. Was very really nice presentation. Now I would like to tell the last participant, Kitty Nairvasu Apu from Dhaka Dental College. Moderator, can you hear me? Yes, Apu. Is it clear? Yes. Is my screen alright? It is visible. All right. Hi, everybody. A very good evening to everybody present here. Before I begin, I would like to say thank you to Exist Dental School for giving us this opportunity. It's definitely been a very informational one. And secondly, to a warm welcome to all the judges, to every respective people present here, and to the moderator and my fellow co-participants. I believe you both have done a very wonderful job. So I would like, let's start. My name is Kirti Nair Vasu. I'm a third year student from Dhaka Dental College. To begin, I have been uh, assigned for ultrasonic scaling and polishing from non-surgical periodontal procedures. So today I will be presenting about what is ultrasonic scaling, the instruments, the scalar tips, the stroke directions that is used, the indication and contraindications, and the advantage and disadvantage and the clinical outcomes of ultrasonic scaling. Next, moving on to polishing, what is it and the polishing instruments, the advantage, disadvantage, and also the aerosol defense level, and lastly, the precautions. So I would start here with ultrasonic scaling. Ultrasonic scaling, it is also known as a power driving scalers. So it works by when there's a high frequency of electrical energy, it is converted into high frequency of sound wave, which then becomes a mechanical vibration, which is the main mode of action of this scaling. Next is the uh, fact, I would like to explain the factors of, that affects the mode of actions of power scalers. So firstly, is frequency. The frequency of ultrasonic scalers, they range from uh, 18,000 to 50,000 hertz. And this frequency, it also has a relationship together with the active area that is working. Example, like a 30K frequency ultrasonic scaler, they have a, uh, a smaller active area that works. Example, 4.2 millimeter area. But when there's a 25K uh, frequency, it has a working area of 4.3 millimeter. Secondly, I would like to move on to the stroke, the type of stroke that is used. And it, the stroke is also related to the amplitude. So in the ultrasonic devices, we have this, the higher the power, the, the higher the power that is used on the ultrasonic devices, it also shows that there's a longer stroke pattern. Thirdly is the water flow. So as for the water flow, we have three types of water flow in the scalar tips. It may be coming from the base or the water may be coming from the tip or the, known as direct flow. And thirdly, is from an external tube. I will show the pictures later on. And fourthly, this water also has physiological, three types of physiological effects that it causes. Firstly, I would explain acoustic streaming. Acoustic streaming is the unidirectional uh, fluid flow, which is caused by the ultrasonic uh, wave. Secondly, is acoustic turbulence. Acoustic turbulence is whenever the movement of the tip, it uh, accelerates the coolant and there is swirling effect. And this swirling effect then leads to cavitation by cavitation is now the formation of bubbles caused by high turbulence. So these bubbles will then uh, explode, it will implode, sorry, and it will cause shock waves. And combination of these three effects, it will help in the destruction of bacteria. 
Next, moving on to ultrasonic instruments, I have two instruments here shown. On the left is piezoelectric ultrasonic device. On the right, I have magneto magnetostrictive ultrasonic devices. The, on, the main differences between these both is piezoelectric tip, they move in a linear pattern. So does it, having it to have uh, two active surfaces and magnetostrictive tip, they move in an elliptical or an orbital stroke pattern, having it to have uh, four active working surfaces. Now, this depends on the doctor's preferences on the dentist preferences because they both have their own advantage and disadvantages. Next, moving on to scalar tips. I have universal scalar tips here shown in the picture. So the, the large diameter scalar tips, they are all used to remove large and tenacious deposits. And the thinner diameters one, they are more site specific and it's more precise to use. As for the straight tips, it is ideal for patients with gingivitis and also patients with, uh, who come for deep plucking maintenance. Next is the right and left contra angle tip. So since it's already designed to be angle specified, if we have greater access, there's greater exploration, and also there's better adaptation to root morphology. And below here, I have shown uh, water delivery options. So these are the delivery options I've showed, I've talked about before. We have direct flow, base flow, and also external tube. They also have, they are also, it depends on the dentist who, according to their preferences, which one they would like to use. Next is the working stroke directions. As generally, we have three working stroke directions. We have vertical direction, horizontal, and also oblique stroke. And this vertical, the most commonly frequent one used is vertical and oblique strokes. But horizontal strokes, they are usually used in case of like line angles or pocket depths. And yeah. And for scaling, we use a stroke that is short and powerful. It is a short, powerful, and also it is a short, short, powerful and a pull stroke for scaling. Right next, we have uh, indications and also contraindications of uh, mechanized and mechanized instruments. So firstly, it is used in case of debridement of supragingival calculus and extra extrinsic stains, like coffee from tea, coffee, tobacco. And then it is also used for debridement of subgingival calculus, biofilm, root surface constituencies, periodontal pathogens, like AAs, Rivotella, Intermedia, Porphyromonas, gingivalis. Next is for orthodontic cement removal and for gingival and periodontal conditions like gingivitis or when there's increased pocket depth so to prevent the plug buildup. And in case of polishing, it is indicated in margination to reduce overhangs. As for contraindications, they are all contraindicated in case of uh, chronic pulmonary diseases like asthma, emphysema, cystic fibrosis, and pneumonia because I will explain this later. These ultrasonic scalings, they produce aerosol. So they will ventilate, um, it disrupts the ventilation and also it will deposit in the lung. Second, also any cardiovascular diseases with secondary pulmonary disease and also patients who have difficulty in swallowing. Moving on, for the advantages of ultrasonic scaling, sharpening, you do not need to sharpen the instruments and also it's easier to debride any inaccessible percations. There's lesser tissue distension compared to mechanical, compared to manual instruments and it reduces the operator's fatigue and there's lesser, uh, lesser chance of injuries. As for the disadvantages here, it seems it's an ultrasonic scaling, there's continuous water flowing and you need, that we need water control evacuation needed constantly the suction. And secondly here, I will talk about contaminated aerosol production. So the aerosol production here, um, the size of the particles that will be in, that can be inhaled by the patients are 0 0.5 micrometer to 10 micrometer. This aerosol, it, when it deposits in the lung, it is also dangerous for respiratory patient, respiratory illness patients, and also it leads to transmission of diseases. Thirdly, is it also leads to noise, vibration, and scaling requires power supply, and also patient may be uncomfortable due to the water spray. As for the efficiency, we can save a lot of time, and there's a variety of tip designs, so it there's better accessibility. Next, for clinical outcomes, it helps in removing biofilm, bacteria, calculus, and also reduction in the bleeding, the pocket depth, the probing depth, and also it helps, does it cleans the clinical attachment. Next, moving on to polishing. Here I've inserted a video. Uh, polishing is the process to maintain smooth and shiny tooth surfaces, and it is also for causative agents of the diseases so that it would less likely reaccumulate. The video is not loading, it's okay. Polishing materials and instruments. Right? So the materials that is used in case of polishing is profile axis paste. And this profile axis paste, they usually come in a different type of abrasives, uh, abrasive grades, where they come in fine, medium, or coarse grades. Secondly, we use uh, rubber cups. Rubber cups, as I have shown in the picture here, they all have web, they all have uh, web configured 
configurations. They have bristle brushes of different varieties. They have dental tapes, where these dental tapes, they are used interproximally in places that we cannot access. Then air powder polishing, it is also a powder type of abrasive, where examples we use sodium bicarbonate. Next is the stage of tooth polishing to reduce the biofilm retention, to resist any tarnish corrosion, to decrease the attrition cost, and for aesthetic reasons, and also to improve health. As for disadvantages here, as I've mentioned before, it produces alcohol, sorry, it produces aerosol, and also there is frictional heat present here because whenever there's the revolving rubber cups, they are not moist, they are not used together with the prophylaxis space, which is not moist enough, there will be frictional heat, which will lead to friction. You have friction. only two Thank you. Next is abrasion, where caused by sodium bicarbonate and also aluminum trihydro trihydroxide, and also stiff bristles, which will confine the working area, and also limitations, like I have mentioned before, respiratory patients and hypertension patients, hemodialysis patients. And we have some levels of defense and aerosol reductions. Firstly, we need to have our mask, glove, head caps, surgical, uh, sorry, head cap, face shield our PPE, and secondly is we need, before any procedure, we give them a rinse with 0.12% of uh, chlorhexidine gluconate. Thirdly, we always use a high-speed evacuation device. And us go to precautions. We always need to be precautious in case of unshielded pacemakers, because now, but nowadays it is safer because there is bipolar titanium insulation of the pacemakers. Then in case of infectious diseases like HIV, hepatitis, tuberculosis, then demineralized tooth surfaces, exposed dentin in case of any uh, dentin sensitivity, and also cautious in case of restorative materials in children. Lastly, is immunosuppressive uh, patients and also uncontrolled diabetes patients, uncontrolled diabetes mellitus patients, because it will impair their uh, it, the wound healing that is impaired and also they, they are more susceptible to bacterial infection. This here is Carenza's clinical periodontology. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Apu. That was really a nice presentation uh, of, at all of this. And uh, now I will start and uh, have a look on the question answering session. Now I will uh, request uh, Dr. Unupam Par uh, Akram Parvet sir to start up. Sir, you have to question answer uh, session. Can you hear me? Dr. Akram Parvet, sir. Yes, I, I can hear you. Sir, sir we are uh, all in the question answering session, sir. I would like to request the question to one of our participants. I have one question to first first present. Assalamualaikum, sir. Suppose one patient, a ten year old patient, need uh, scaling. He, he is suffering from. He has suffered from heart, heart, heart disease, what precaution will you take? Uh, the precautions uh, should be like um, using uh, protective barriers like uh, double masks, double hand gloves, and um, uh, face shield and uh, aprons. And um, after that, uh, this, um, so uh, antibiotic prophylaxis should be uh, done before the procedure, sir. Uh, like uh, if the patient is uh, capable to take oral medication, then uh, amoxicillin, uh, two gram uh, before the procedure, uh, two gram uh, one hour before procedure. And uh, if the patient is on, um, is uh, allergic to uh, amoxicillin, then uh, clindamycin, 600 uh, milligram, um, one hour before procedure, uh, or azithromycin, 500 milligram, 
uh, one hour before procedure or if the patient is uh, unable to take oral medications uh, and also allergic to um, penicillin then uh, he can take uh, clindamycin IV uh, 600 milligram intravenously 30 minutes before procedure. Yeah, one question to second the speaker. Uh, what do you mean by my question to second speaker? Second presenter. What do you mean by adjunctive therapy in non-surgical uh, periodontal therapy? Not to you, to second speaker. Sorry, sir, I can't get second you. Presenter. What do you understand adjunctive therapy in non-surgical periodontal uh, management? Is there any other uh, option uh, after scaling planning? Uh, any adjunctive therapy can help to a process uh, of the management. Adjunctive therapy. So first of all, uh, we should apply the local anesthesia for the preparation of uh, for the scaling or the planning treatment. Same question to third speaker. Any adjunctive therapy uh, possible with scaling, good planning, or improvement of the uh, treatment for, for better prognosis? So I would say give topical uh, applications of doxycycline. Do you have any uh, idea about laser in non surgical management of periodontal uh, disease? The third, third uh, presenter, do you have any idea about laser? Not to you, to third presenter. Uh, Not first presenter. I'm asking a question to third presenter. Laser, do you think laser have any uh, role so this hello sir so laser would actually would, uh, give any hemostatic effects and then there is selective uh, calculus ablation to remove the calculus uh, that will build up after that and there is also some bactericidal effects during the laser okay i have no more question next Upon I have no more question, you can proceed. Yes, sir. sir, now I would request to our uh, Dr. Shiva Manjunath Aji, sir, to uh, start question answering session. Right. Uh, first of all, uh, I would uh, appreciate all three of you that you know you are presented well. And uh, I have one more question for each of you. The first for Sharmin. Akhtar Sharna, for her, you mentioned about detection of calculus after scaling, and you said about tactile sensation and visual method. Other than that, there are any other methods to detect the calculus? Visual method you mentioned, then tactile sensation you mentioned. Other than these two, do you know any other methods to detect the calculus? Sir, uh, we can uh, we can uh, uh, use the scalar uh, around the uh, gum line uh, if any uh, if any calculus is re uh, revealing or not, or uh, we can use the floss uh, so, uh, so, uh, so 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 that we can feel uh, uh, any calculus are there or not. While using the scalars, again, you have a tactile sensation, right? While using yes. the floss, also you have a tactile sensation, right? So this is, it is you already told. Now, any other methods? Uh, so green light. Okay, you because you mentioned the reference of Karanza, you go back to Karanza and see. 
radiographically also you can measure you can see the calculus because of the radio opacity and recently there is something called perioscope like an endoscope also can be used to detect the calculus okay these two okay. techniques what you said also right it's nothing wrong but i just want to know do you know about other techniques right okay okay the second question for i mean shaila islam suchona is it you mentioned about curettage uh when will you come to know that curettage is over so uh, curettage actually mainly one 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 question have you done by any chance curettage so far no sir not yet okay so then it's it's difficult to tell you uh, how to do how to get to know about curettage so i will not i will not ask you this question uh, second question i'll ask you today's topic is non surgical periodontal therapy right so yes. other than scaling and root planing can you tell me any other non surgical periodontal therapy so uh, so ultrasonic and sonic procedure can be scaling uh, right even this is scaling right yeah scaling let's that's also scaling other than scaling and root planing so primarily we have to maintain this oral hygiene by brushing and uh, floss for this uh, primary uh, if we uh, get the primary non surgical we have no uh, surgical procedure but or by the scaling so because all three of you have mentioned about only scaling root planing and curettage there yeah, is other non surgical therapy also there like local drug delivery like laser therapy you know like antibiotic therapy chemotherapy all that is also comes because one of the doctor has give as the question also any adjunctive therapy even that is also called as non surgical therapy okay yes sir right. i'll mind let's come, let's come to the last kirti nayar vasu uh, yes, you mentioned about ultrasonic uh, uh, scalers yes, why magnetostrictive scalers have been outdated so uh, in case magnetostrict magnetostrictive there are a few reasons firstly is because the old type of magnetostrictive scalers they have they are not bipolar titanium uh, shield they don't have shield in their it's not safe for pacemaker it is not safe for uh, patients who have unshielded pacemakers so that's one secondly is this magnetostrictive they also have like metal stacks and this metal stacks it will they will be able to bend and this bending will cause vibration during using and also what else um does by any chance magnetostrictive causes any damage to the tooth because of their motion because see if it was good enough today also everybody would be using magnetostrictive right why everybody switched over to the piezoelectric there must be some the reason piezo right? jis a piezo piezoelectric uh, nowadays it's you first uh, it is used because it can be used in all types of in a uh, range of patients patients who geriatric patients or patients who wear patients who have pacemakers and secondly is uh, this piezoelectric they do not vibrate so it there is better tactile sensitivity because it does not vibrate and also it has a wider grip in the piezoelectric tip so there is not hello yeah yeah go ahead go ahead hello, go ahead sir. go ahead, yeah. go ahead. So piezoelectric tip there is also a wider grip in the scalers so there is better ergonomic it is a better ergonomically designed so there's lesser discomfort there's better efficiency in doing work there's lesser physical effort in yeah okay i, I will it. just tell you two sent two words two sentence here have you tried uh, uh, magnetostrictive to scalers earlier by any chance have you just tried no never so if i think younger generation has not seen it we used to have a magnetostrictive it is very heavier and piezoelectric is very lighter two thing is the linear motion and elliptical motion in magnetostrictive it is a chances of damaging the tooth structure so that's why it is being 
less use now and it has been better is because dodging dodging of the tooth surface yeah okay so i think my questions are in uh, apurva i think i am done with my questions shiva sir you forgot it becomes hot also very much yes 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 sir yes sir thank you sir so much uh, now i can proceed and i will go to the provin be good but sir to uh, question uh, something to our presenters yeah so uh, sharman shaila and kirti all the three of you all presented well a uh, quick uh, one one question uh, maybe for each of you all uh, first let's start off with sharman uh, sharman uh, uh, how would you know your scaling is uh, you know complete you have done a scaling and root planing how do you assess whether it's complete or no what is the So, sir, uh, like I have mentioned uh, before, um, after the scaling procedure, uh, we'll uh, we'll check out if in if any calculus is uh, is it still there or not. We can um, uh, we can uh, use the scalar around the gums to detect any if any calculus. Is there any way? Is there any way how the tooth or the root should feel like? Sir. Um, Yes, sir. Uh, there, there, there will be hypersensitivity, roughness of root surface, roughness of the enamel, and uh, stains are there. Or, uh, of course, the patient will feel hypersensitive. Okay. One more, a quick question. Suppose I give you an option. I know both are very important. Suppose I give you an option of either a mechanical plaque control, like, uh, like mechanical, uh, you know, scaling and root planing, uh, or a chemical plaque control to treat. Uh, the the gum diseases which do you yes, think sir. has a more important role out here sir um i would say that um first we have it is very important uh, to control the plaque um, chemically uh, at home uh, after uh, because um in, in in case of chemical agent like uh, dentifrice mouthwashes uh, they uh, all of these things are used basically uh, by, uh, by the patient in, in in case of home care so um, so if, if the patient the, uh, the tissue response uh, will get more uh, if, uh, if the more will be the um, chemical procedure uh, is done uh, correctly and the mechanical procedure like flossing and uh, brushing it is also important uh, but it, it needs a uh, proper way like uh, yeah so sharman uh, sharman here i think the mechanical is very important uh, yes, the sir. chemical is usually as an adjunct usually it's given the you know the mechanical is very important so you know you should be knowing about this okay yeah yes, and sir. a quick uh, question to the second uh, contestant uh, that is uh, shaila uh, shaila have you uh, where is shaila yeah yes sir yeah uh, what is inadvertent curettage Have you heard about this term in Edwardian curettage? No, have you come across? No. Okay. By by any chance, uh, uh, why this procedure is now more so outdated curettage? Any idea? Sorry, sir. Yeah, it's it's on. Anyway, are you getting my question? It's not uh, preferred much now. Curettage. By any chance, uh, do you know about it? Sir, I can't get your question. Please can you? Yeah, ask? see the, the 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 procedure curettage. Now it is not preferred much. Sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, earlier in the textbooks and all, it was you know quite a big chapter. Right now, you don't find it in some of the textbooks. Any idea why? Also, no, no, no issues, no issues. So you can just, uh, you know, and uh, can you can you use lasers uh, for some kind of a curettage or uh, you know, is there yes. any use of lasers? Yes, sir. Laser uh, now this uh, uh, this time uh, uh, laser should be applied. Laser is applied very much with this uh, procedure. Okay. okay, okay. Thank you. And uh, let's go to the third contestant. That is. Uh, uh kirti i uh, yeah so kirti yes, uh, are you there yeah yeah i yes, just sir, wanted yes. uh, yeah now you talked about cavitation you talked about you know 
Um, so I wanted to know now in the age of COVID, right? Now you have, uh, you want to do an ultrasonic. How are you going to, and what are you going to incorporate uh, when you're going ahead with the ultrasonics? Are you going to go in for some additional uh, equipments or, uh, you know, when you're doing an ultrasonic in case the need be, you have to do it? How would you go about uh, trying to minimize aerosol production? Uh, or disinfect the aerosol? To, so to disinfect the aerosol, it's by, before the procedure, we give them a rinse of chlorhexidine gluconate so that it does Perfectly not, so that fine. because chlor aerosol, it will be contaminated with the bacteria, saliva, and the blood. So we give them a mouthwash first before the procedure to reduce the contamination of the aerosols. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You can always go in for even the high volume evacuation and, you know, there are many other uh, uh, disinfectants yes, can be placed in the, you know, the, the water source as well. And uh, so many are there. So anyway, good. Anyway, all the three of you all, a very good uh, presentation. Thank you. Hey, sir, uh, thank you so much for the question and presentation. So we are all about in the last moment. Now I will announce the time of presenter's presentation. Uh, our first participant, Sharmi Nakhtashwarna Apo, 8 minutes 2 seconds. Shaila Islam Fujun Apo, 8 minutes 37 uh, seconds. Kirti Nairvasu Apo, 9 minutes 16 seconds. Now uh, I'm feeling very precious and lucky to have a live session with uh, such an honorable teacher. And uh, this is uh, very lucky uh, to, uh, to have uh, this live session with you, sir. So thank you, teachers, especially gives us uh, many valuable times here. So I'm requesting our honorable teachers to say something in this last moment. Sir, I will request uh, Dr. Onupam Podrashat to say something. No, sir. Sir, unmute, sir. Unmute. Sir, you are unmuted. Okay, okay. okay. sorry, sorry. Uh, thank you, Aparna, for your nice moderation of today's session. I am very happy of today's presenter. This session was very nice, amazing, and uh, interesting presentation. And three presenters go well. And uh, hopefully, our judges you know, are doing his proper judgment about this, this presenter. And Shaila Islam Shuchuna and Sharmin Akta Shorna and Kirti Nair Basu, and they are doing well. And hopefully, for the for the base of the presentation, and I have some um, uh, uh, some point to identify this question. Number one, yeah, and I have question to our. Uh, yeah, our first presenter. Yeah, Hello, sir. Sharmina Yes, sir. Hello, sir. The chisel who and file is used for subdivisible calculus removal. Sir, uh, yes, sir. Chisel is used for subdivisible uh, calculus removal. And now I'm going to uh, second presenter, Shaila Islam Suchana. Yes, sir. Is is, is uh, usually used nowadays? Uh, sir, uh, for, uh, nowadays is not uh, uh, not used curage as much as for, uh, 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 but scaling and. Uh, uh, it's much preferable than uh, the curage scaling. But curage is also be uh, done if uh, there is the need. There is needed. So, like calculus removal or necrotic uh, uh, cementum, if uh, removed for uh, from the uh, root surface, then then uh, we should uh, we should apply, um, perform with curage. Why root planning is usually done? Why root planning is usually done? Indication of root planning. Indication of root running. Sir, uh, 
so so roof planning is uh, done for the smoothness of this uh, root surface and the reattachment of this uh, gingiva and uh, uh, the it helps to reattachment of root surface and gingiva between so this is the main purpose of this uh, uh, usually woman which is done in root planning kit sorry sir which is usually done why man root man process of root planning please give me answer about the process of root planning how you do the so we uh process process uh, is to uh, by scaling is the smoothing you have to smoothing smoothing of the root surface smoothing of root smoothing uh, smoothing of the root surface by removing removing necrosis tissue necros uh, parental tissue necro uh, and uh, calculus calculus and necros in the root uh, surface and bacterial toxin that yes. may cause the uh it prevent the uh, reattachment of the uh and the ligament so for the for the attachment of the pedontal attachment ligament we plan the root planning yeah yes. and now i'm going to kirti nai basu kirti nai basu Uh, well, um, in case of a patient comes to you, if a patient comes to you with um, age sixty years, with um, valvular disease, what is your treatment plan for remove uh, removing uh, non-surgical procedure for for non-surgical procedure? Which option is prefer so for the for this case? Which so option you... of which option you prefer for the case uh, for this case? So I couldn't hear your question clearly. Yeah. Can you please repeat? If a, a, a patient come to you, is yes. sixty years old with right. valvular disease, with valvular disease, what is right. the treatment option? What is the treatment option of you? A non-surgical procedure. So, uh, antibiotic therapy. Antibiotic therapy. What are the non-surgical procedures? What are the non-surgical procedures discussed today? What are the non-surgical? So hand procedures? hand instrument scaling, sir. Why not in ultrasonic scaling? Because it is uh, contraindicated in case of. It is contraindicated in case of a uh, CVS conditions. Why it is contraindicated? Why? <clears throat> okay, thank you. I I request to our uh, all judges on all advisors, uh, please give answer of of my question. Uh, hopefully, uh, in your discussion, Professor Dr. Anirban Chatterjee Sir, Balaji Manohar Sir, Govind Kutba Sir, and and Atram uh, Parvez Sir, and uh, our Shiva um, uh, Sir, Shiva Sir, and uh, I hope you uh, your question is please discuss uh, please discuss about your question also. The uh, the question that cannot uh, reply our student or our presenter. Thank you all. Uh, I would like to request our teachers uh, to discuss about their question, especially Dr. Onupam Sir's question, sir. I would. I would uh, like to call our Dr. Akram Parvez sir to say something about their, this question. Those patients suffer from valvular heart disease. Before any periodontal therapy, need antibiotic prophylaxis to prevent bacterial endocarditis, subacute bacterial endocarditis, 
especially uh, we use amoxicillin 2 gram for adult and patient below 10 years half of the adult dose and below 5 years one fourth of the adult dose when patient uh, allergic to penicillin amoxicillin we can use clindamycin thank you thank you so much sir now i would like to request dr shiva mandunath sir to discuss about this question <clears throat> I agree with the sir, which just now before me uh, said about antibiotic coverage, because the chances of bacterial endocarditis is very high. So, although the oral uh, flora consists of all the obnoxious bacteria, uh, maybe a gram-negative uh, bacteria, which chances of bacteria can start and it can have an effect on the heart. So, in order to avoid this, the antibiotic coverage is uh, mandatory. Although it has been from the generations, this regime has been keep changing from ages. Let's say for about past 20 years, we have seen not less than three or four changes of uh, uh, you know, uh, regimes have been changed. Earlier, it used to be three grams and then one gram before the procedures, one hour before the procedures. So the, the recent regime, whatever Sir spoke about is absolutely fine. And uh, preferably in those cases, uh, if possible, I would prefer to do a, a hand scaling rather than an ultrasonic scaling, but still an antibiotic is uh, recommended to give to such kind of patients. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would profit to our next teacher, Dr. Robin B. Kudbasar, to discuss about this question. Yeah, I think uh, both the uh, uh, my previous uh, speakers have told very clear guidelines and uh, I go by that. It's always better to be uh, safe than be sorry later. So an antibiotic uh, coverage is always uh, mandatory, and uh, uh, it is uh, you have to go according to the the recent literature, the recent studies, and go according to the criteria laid uh, by the societies, and uh, that is very much needed. So I think uh, that is perfectly fine. What has been mentioned. Thank you, sir. So I just want to announce the name of the participant of episode 14, uh, Team uh, Michigan, uh, under surgical periodontal procedure. Uh, our first participant, Jenny Rai from City Dental College, session 2017 and 18. Uh, Choi Goshabi uh, from Sir Solimunla Medical College, Dental Unit, session 2017 and 18. And, uh, uh, Danjiha Norin Kantapu from Holly Family Red Crescent Medical College, Dental Unit, Session 2017 and 18. Now we are all about in the last session. Now I will uh, I will request to our honorable teacher to say something about today's session. Now I will request our uh, Pravin B. Kudvasar to say something about this session and uh, how you feel in this session. Uh, well, uh, the session uh, went on really fine. Appreciate the uh, hard work put in by all the three speakers if they are undergraduates and uh, trying to put across. Uh, so very well done for all the three speakers. And uh, as well, uh, you as a moderator, you are also excellent. Uh, and uh, uh, thank uh, Anupam uh, and the entire uh, the, the, uh, the senior uh, uh, teachers uh, out here who are uh, contributing towards dentistry and periodontics, especially particularly for in Bangladesh. And uh, we wish to help you a lot as well as want your help also in future to bring this, uh, uh, the Indian society as well as the Bangladeshi Predon Society more uh, together and work on more such uh, programs. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would uh, like to request our Balaji Manhur sir to say something about this question. Thank you, Oparna. Very nice presentation by the young upcoming dentists, Saila Gitti. All are doing very well under the guidance of the teachers in Bangladesh. Uh, just to add that the American Heart Association every now and then keeps on uh, giving guidelines about the use of antibiotics. So. Uh, 
always uh, better to keep an eye on what the American Bad Market Bad Art Association Bad says, Bad uh, Bad says Bad. about uh, the antibiotic prophylaxis for the drugs. <clears throat> Uh, apart from that, uh, uh, I know you all are very young, uh, but it takes a lot of effort from your side to uh, come up to this podium and uh, present uh, papers like this. Uh, I remember when I was an undergraduate, we never used to have any, any chance like this uh, to come up. And uh, you guys are presenting uh, not only in front of your teachers, but uh, you are presenting in front of faculty who are across the borders. Uh, so congratulations to all of you and especially Dr. Akram sir, Akram Parvez and uh, I should not uh, forget uh, Dr. Anupam Podar who is a flag bearer of periodontology now in uh, Bangladesh. Happy congratulations to you and Access Dental School for uh, having provided this platform uh, to promote the science of periodontology to one another. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for your golden words. And uh, I'm, really you, being, I'm really, really thankful, sir, to uh, see you here. And uh, I will uh, I will uh, call our uh, Oniban Chatterjee, sir, Dr. Oniban Chatterjee, sir, to say something about this session. <laughs> Nothing much to say. Uh, thank you, Aparna. Our ETA Bolva Ache, Kubi Bhalo program, and Tinjoni Kubi. Balomaton Mane present Koraweche, Ami to Shab episode of Chilamna, it's better Jay or no no faculty Rasu. It is a really a privilege to be attached with the Bangladesh Parental Society, Jetta or Axis Dental, especially they are doing a wonderful, wonderful job to bring up the dental education in Bangladesh generally and taking up this type of initiative. It needs a lot of uh, encouragement for the students because uh, with this, the especially being a periodontist, all the parents here being a periodontist, uh, like my uh, friends Balaji, Praveen Kudwa, Shiv Manjunath, etc., and, and people who have already come in earlier days, uh, it is a privilege that uh, the periodontal, uh, this one, uh, study or education has been taking going in leaps and bounds on the platform with the help of uh, accidental and uh, as Balaji also mentioned that uh, one man army, Dr. Anupam is doing a wonderful job to bring the specialty of periodontology and implantology into focus in this uh, country of Bangladesh. Thank you very much. Please continue doing this wonderful uh, knowledge sharing platform for the society and the students. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, now I will proceed to our Professor Dr. Shiva Manjunath Ajay, sir, to say something about this. Okay, thank you very much for giving the opportunity to be with all of you. And first of all, I really appreciate you. You people are half an hour ahead of us. By now, your time must be 11.30 night. But at this time also, you people are awake and you have been uh, doing this. I really appreciate it. And it will be very difficult uh, you know, to think about at 11.30 sitting and listening to the presentations and doing that. I appreciate that. Second, everything has been told. And uh, trust me, uh, in Indian Society of Periodontology, Dr. Praveen, Dr. Uh, Balaji Manohar, and Dr. Chatterjee, Dr. Anivan Chatterjee have done a wonderful job. And these people are in, in touch with the uh, Bangladesh Society of Periodontology, I'm sure. There are a lot of lot of things can be bridged between these two societies, and I'm sure in the future uh, we can expect a lot of good best things happen between the these two societies. And all the best to the youngsters who have done a good job. And uh, special congratulations to Anupam Pondar sir. You have been amazing. That you know the amount of enthusiasm you have been shown, and you have been giving the inspiration to the youngsters. Best wishes to you, sir. And. Uh, Hope to see you guys in the future. Thank you. Thanks a lot for giving this opportunity. Thank you so much, sir, for your golden essence. Now, Aparna, Aparna, one thing I missed that you know you have been a wonderful host and moderator also. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. So now I will carry on to our professor, Dr. Akram Parvista, to say something about the session. 
I appreciate Dr. Odu Kwam and Texas Digital School for arranging this program. American Academy of Periodology has given emphasis on non-surgical management of periodontal disease. Of course, non-surgical management, most of the cases can be managed by non-surgical management, periodontal therapy. And Texas Dental School has chosen this important topic. All three, three presenters have done well and worked hard for this program. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now I will carry on to our Dr. Onupam Podar, sir. Actually, Dr. Onupam Podar, sir, is our uh, leader and uh, the. Uh, and uh, our uh, special teachers also, and uh, he is very adorable to us. And uh, I will uh, call uh, call him to uh, say something about this session. Sir, please uh, tell us something about this, about today's session. Sir, unmute, unmute career, sir. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Aparna. Uh, Aparna, uh, several times he called me. And uh, I'm very happy for today's, today's session. The four uh, international speakers, four, four international judges are with us. This is our great pleasure. Accidentally, school with the feels uh, very happy. And they, they, uh, they are very amazing. They are showing the amazing um, program of today's session. I think our judges and our advisors who are always with us, Bangladesh Society of Periodontology and Indian Society of Periodontology will uh, accompany with us and will, uh, we will work together and, and uh, we are trying to emphasize uh, our uh, department, our subject in, in, in different platforms that is public awareness program to our general dentist and also the student awareness by the uh, paper presentation program, also in the um, public you know, awareness program by uh, in, uh, in individually with our, our uh, honorable uh, mentor, Professor Dr. Onima Chatterjee, sir. Uh, yeah. so in 15 days in the valley, we do a program in, in Bangla. Uh, the different diseases, different uh, periodontal diseases uh, that will be helpful to our public, that is public awareness program. And I am very much uh, thanks to our uh, today's uh, our today's judges and our today's mentor and today's advisor. Thank you, Aparna. Um, and thank you, accidentally school and he he. he his uh, team who are working uh, for last two months and that means for us, Rumki and just like uh, Kabbo, they are doing very much job, very much interesting job and very much they are, I, I hope in future they are doing much more better and, and different issue and different uh, program and uh, in in the uh, in this platform about periodontology. Thank you, Apan. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, actually, I'm feeling very pleasure uh, to get all of uh, such a uh, gorgeous teacher to have, and uh, that was uh, amazing live session uh, about today's uh, today's topic. That was all up, uh, all about our today's episode, and thanks uh, all of our. Uh, participants and uh, existential family to stay with us and uh, thank you assalamu alaikum uh, namaskar namaskar sir balaji sir shivar mundana sir anirban sir namaste and, uh, good night uh, yeah, thank you so much thank you, <laughs> thank you. Thank namaskar bhalo presentation hoyeche let us continue erokom kore continue korle aro bhalo sir thank you sir bhobishyote chesta korben aro amader gulo the thakte jodi shomoy hoy our next three session is next three session. You may try to start with us. Next show, next show, next show, next show. Thank you, sir. Good night. 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 Good night.